vais être brusque. Allez-y. Vous n'avez pas l'impression de ne plus pouvoir régler un seul problème Moi, je pense que ces saisons, les citoyens ont l'impression. Hello and thanks for joining us for this week's cinema show with our film critic Lisa Nesselson. Hi Lisa, it's good to see you. Hello, Hansi. Now let's uh, begin with a French film out this week uh, that takes us behind the scenes at the town hall in the French city of Lyon. What exactly should we expect from Alice and the Mayor? Well, first of all, leadership at this moment in the U.S. and the U.K. is in such flagrant disarray that it's really nice to see a movie about how smart, hardworking people in public service really can strive to make people's lives better rather than give comedians more raw material than they know what to do with. Uh, Fabrice Lucchini is absolutely marvelous as socialist mayor of Lyon, Paul Theranot. He's completely devoted to serving his city and his country, but he's realized that he's just run out of ideas. He used to have, he says, as many as 25 a day. He keep a dictaphone handy to record his own creativity. Now he's got the equivalent of writer's block for a politician. Enter low-key 30-year-old academic Alice Heyman, perfectly portrayed by Anaïs de Moustier, who is hired for a nebulous job conjuring ideas at City Hall. Now Alice, whose background is in literature and philosophy, enters a sort of wonderland, as in, I wonder what I'm doing here. Her interactions with Therano and his staff are our gateway into a lively, funny, and touching exploration of the way we live now, seen through the filters of two generations. Talking in the best possible way, this is a classy but accessible piece of entertainment that's also food for thought. And I have to say, it's also really nice to see a film in which a young woman and a powerful man, more than twice her age, have a mutually enriching relationship without any sexual overtones. Sounds very interesting. Let's take a quick look. Je vais être brusque. Allez-y. Vous n'avez pas l'impression de ne plus pouvoir régler un seul problème Moi, je pense que ces saisons, les citoyens ont l'impression. Monsieur le maire, excusez-moi, on nous attend. Non, non, on nous attend pas, on m'attend moi. Vous distribuez ça à tout le monde et vous leur dites que il remplace et il annule l'autre discours. OK OK. Ton nouveau bureau crée un énorme scandale à la mairie. Un scandale Il y a même une pétition qui circule. Il faut rester modeste. Pas de mégalomanie, pas de gigantisme. Ça va les notes, ça va les notes. Je fais pas un cours sur Spinoza. Alice Heyman, est-ce qu'elle prend des notes Elle prend pas de notes. I can imagine it's quite hard to do your job if no one tells you what that job is actually meant to be. <laughs> of course. Alice, who dresses casually, is thrown into the formal but incredibly chaotic world of upper echelon politics. For example, the mayor's chief of staff asks her, can you read this book in the next hour because the mayor wants to see you in 30 minutes? <laughs> Bemused but accommodating, Alice endeavors to navigate a harried environment that passes for normal. Everybody is working really hard all the time, but are they getting anything done? beyond rewording hollow jargon and feeding relentless forward motion. The result is rewarding as a film-going experience and as a defense of smart people in civic roles who are still capable of distanced irony. Now, men of action rarely take the time to think, and deep thinkers rarely leap into action. The danger for modern democracy, the director implies, is right up there with global warming. A film more, more philosophical than we might uh, <laughs> think at the beginning. Um, also out this week uh, is another French film uh, set in Senegal, uh, Atlantique by Mati Diop. Uh, Diop was one of just four female directors in competition uh, in Cannes this past May. Uh, she has been hailed as the first woman of colour uh, to compete for the top award, Le Palme d'Or. How did she do here? Well, if she'd been given the top prize, the Palme d'Or, I might have had to hand in my critic credentials in protest. But she did very well indeed for a first-time director. For reasons that escape me, the jury in Cannes this year awarded this film the Grand Prix, essentially second place. Marie Diop, whose father is Senegalese and mother French, and whose uncle was one of Senegal's most revered directors, may make a wonderful film someday. She may yet turn into a truly skilled filmmaker whose work can't be missed. But in my opinion, that hasn't happened yet. Let's take a quick look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I 
Simulator Bye So Lisa, what is this film actually about? Well, uh, an attractive young woman is slated to be married in 10 days to a successful businessman, but she's in love with somebody else, a handsome, hardworking construction worker who, like his colleagues, hasn't been paid for months on end. Now, this is an interesting point because the man taking advantage of their labor is another black African, not some soulless foreign conglomerate run by white men that wants a glossy skyscraper in Dakar. So strong young men have jobs, they just can't get paid. Without telling anybody, they set off one night in a makeshift sort of canoe, hoping to reach the coast of Spain. All aboard are assumed to be dead, or are they? Let's take a listen now to the director on why she decided to treat her story in this way. I started thinking about making the film 10 years ago. The political situation was different then. But what was striking at the time, at least in Senegal, was the scale of illegal immigration. I was so shocked at the time by the media coverage of the issue. People were no longer individuals, but just figures and statistics. So I wanted to give a voice to these people and contribute to restoring self-esteem in Africa. So this is a socially conscious film, voodoo undertones, but you weren't convinced. <laughs> well, to be fair, Maddie Jupp did not sign up to be the poster child for what non-white female directors can and can't do, but that's been the hook in countless sort of stories and reviews. We've known women can make movies since the movies began. The thrust of the current debate centers more on why more women haven't been given the opportunity to direct feature films. So personally, I don't care if a woman wrote and directed this. I don't care if she's of African heritage. I don't care if she tells a story with political components, which she does. All I care about is whether the film is good. And the best I can say about Atlantique is that it tries hard, but it's so-so. There's a horror fantasy element that has potential, but the police investigation by what seems to be a two-person police station falls very flat and is poorly edited. And now I've heard it said that we'll have a level playing field when a woman can make a mediocre movie just like a guy and still get hired to make another film after that. It's certain that we will be hearing more from Giap behind the camera, and I hope her next film is incredibly good. OK, well, the 30th edition of the Dinar Film Festival has just wrapped up in Brittany in northwest France. It's devoted entirely to British films, British directors. Uh, tell us more. Well, the Dinard Film Festival is one of my favorite filmocentric events here in France, or anywhere. Completely unpretentious, designed for the general public, and wonderfully programmed in an adorable setting. Now, highlights this year were two films about genuine historical events I knew absolutely nothing about. Mike Lee was the guest of honor, and the festival hosted the French premiere of Peterloo, a long but incredibly informative look at conditions in England in 1819, when the cavalry charged tens of thousands of peacefully assembled workers in St. Peter's Field in Manchester. Now, they were seeking parliamentary representation, but the ruling classes panicked, leading to what became known as the Peterloo Massacre, sort of an echo of Waterloo. Now, the journalists who witnessed the shameful events wrote up what they saw, leading to the founding of the Manchester Guardian, ancestor of the paper known today as The Guardian, and The Keeper won the Audience Prize and the Main Jury's Prize, The Golden Hitchcock. I knew absolutely nothing about Bert Trautmann, a German soldier in a prisoner of war camp in England in 1945, who's spotted by the manager of a local football club and goes on to play quite heroically for Manchester City. His life is a sort of American dream only set in England. Troutman's romance with a local lass is beautifully portrayed, as is his phenomenal skill at football. Now, understandably, the local population, uh, particularly Jewish citizens, didn't have really warm feelings right after the war for uh, a German. An open letter to the press from Manchester's rabbi at the time, Alexander Altman, asking for Troutman to be given a chance, made a huge difference. Now, 30 years ago, when this festival began, the programmers had a hard time rounding up even half a dozen new British films to show, and it has been thrilling to watch the British film industry recover and thrive. So if you thought it would be fun to go to a film festival in France, but you don't speak French, the British festival in Dinard is absolutely perfect. And Brittany is a very beautiful place to visit very, very, as well, very. it should be said. Uh, now, a French uh, animated film from 1984, uh, Gwen et le Livre de Sable, uh, Gwen or the Book of Sand uh, in English, has been restored with input from its director. Yes, master animator Jean-François Jean 
Lagioni, whose previous film was The Exquisitely Melancholy, uh, Melan Melancholy, that's a place where people are melancholy. <laughs> melancholy Louise uh, in Winter received a Crystal of Honor trophy at the most recent ANSI Animation Festival, and that event, of course, sets the standard for animation worldwide. Now, I had seen the director's other films and liked them, but I was not prepared for how out there this one is. The word surreal gets overused for not easily cataloged visuals or plot points, but that's exactly the right term here. Uh, the hand-drawn uh, and painted images are positively druggy, playing with scale in ways that jostle your eyeballs and uh, confuse your cortex. This is a 65-minute long flight of visual imagination hung on the idea that the gods have exited Earth, leaving behind only sand and the intimation of dangerous creatures who must be avoided by walking on stilts and hiding out at night. We see the abandoned trappings of the 20th century, but it's not clear whether they loom large because you need a microscope to see the protagonists or if there's something else inexplicable going on. Sounds very mysterious indeed. Well, that brings us to the end of this cinema special. Lisa Nesselson, our film critic in residence, thank you very much indeed. Thank you at home for watching. And remember, you can, of course, uh, get your culture fix on our website too, france24.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. We'll leave you with a trailer for Gwen et le livre de sable. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this. <laughs> Affection dans les mains, dans les ans, dans les là. Affection, affection.